So hello everybody, welcome to what is the 58th IEP Live Learn Lunch. We're really thrilled to have everyone here um, and to be seeing the next in our series of Seeing Opportunities Live Learn Lunch webinars with RNIB. Heather, for those of you who haven't joined us before, will be taking us through today's session. So with no further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Heather, who's going to take us through. Thanks, Heather. Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, so, so I'm actually wearing my RNIB colours, but I'm aware that we can't really see this. So here we are, we have RNIB t-shirts. So that's me. Uh, so yeah, so my name's Heather Barbara. And um, yeah, I'm an employment advisor working with RNIB. And today, um, as Helen said, we're looking at assistive technologies uh, for employees with sight loss. And also quite crucially, I think, where we're going to get funding for these things. So um, to, to introduce today's webinar, if you've recently experienced sight loss, um, you might not be aware of the assistive technology that's available to help you access computers and to read printed documents. Or you might have some knowledge of what assistive te technology, uh, perhaps you've used it in the past, um, but you might not be aware of what's become available more recently. So today is just really about giving you a, a broad overview of what's out there and how you might also get funds uh, that you would need to pay for these things. Um, so I've included a few short video clips, which we hope will work okay, they should do, um, and um, I'll, int I'll introduce that to you along the way as we go. And um, as always, we'd like to ask you to use the chat facility. Um, so, you know, please let us know if you have uh, clients or customers with sight loss. And perhaps, you know, if you want to comment on the types of technology that they use as well. So if we could move Helen on to the, the next slide, please, that would be smashing. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, th there's many ways in which people with sight loss um, might use a computer. And for some people, um, the answer could just be as simple as having a larger monitor, and that might be all that they need. Um, for others, it can be about screen magnification, um, and that's a tool which, um, as the, the title would suggest, it enlarges the content from the screen and therefore makes it easier to see and read. Um, so, you know, platforms um, such as Windows, Android, iOS um, have uh, screen magnification already pre-installed, and that just really means that it can be set up and used right out of the box, which is great. Um, but for some people, the pre-installed tools might not be adequate, um, as they can be quite limited on the additional features that they offer. So to get a wider range of additional features, screen magnific uh, magnification software can be purchased. And aside from the magnification part of it, they offer adjustments um, to the mouse pointer to make that easier to see and to follow. Um, you can enhance the, the cursors. You can change the color of the background and the foreground um, to help create better contrasts. And also they can come with a, a speech element included. So to begin with, I'd like to show you a, a short video clip about a screen magnification software that's called Zoom Text. Some of you may have heard of Zoom Text. Please let us know if you have. Um, the clip lasts for about a minute and a half, I would say. Um, so fingers crossed if we can go into the, the Zoom Text magnifier reader uh, clip that we have here, Helen. Hi, I'm Derek Bovey from AI Squared, the makers of ZoomText. ZoomText is a screen magnification and reading software program for your computer. It's designed for anyone that suffers from a vision impairment or eye strain from daily computer use. The two main components to ZoomText are magnification and screen reading. The magnifier will allow you to magnify everything on the screen up to 36 times and provide helpful screen enhancements to help you locate things on screen. The reader will speak all on-screen information and documents in a friendly, human-sounding voice right through your computer's speakers. Using our patented technology, ZoomText will make sure everything on your computer is crystal clear and easy to read, even at the highest magnification levels. You can also adjust screen contrast and even change the text and background color to ease eye strain. And ZoomText even makes it easier to locate your mouse pointer, text cursor, or items on a file menu with the help of the focus enhancement. In addition to all of these features, ZoomText can also read any text document, email, or web page. 
four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. This is just a brief look at all that ZoomText has to offer. Our product has been helping people stay employed and connected for over 20 years. To learn more, visit us online at aisquared.com. Okay, thanks, Helen. That's fashion. So, um, I hello and welcome to this how-to. Oh, well, <laughs> so, um, I should say that that video is quite old, and it's not really as blurry as it looks. Um, it's just the best that we could come up with, really, um, from uh, YouTube that doesn't last for like three hours. Uh, we wanted something short and sweet that kind of just introduces the features. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for some people, the, the pre-installed uh, screen magnification features might be all that they need. Um, and Windows 10, if you have that, that version um, of Windows, it's obviously the most up-to-date version. And the, the ease of access settings in it have taken a huge step forward in PC accessibility for people with sight loss from previous versions of Windows. Um, so what I tend to do is if somebody, um, has they need a little bit of enhancement without it being hugely um, enhanced, shall we say. Um, quite often I'll recommend that if they have Windows 10 that they use the, the pre-installed features because they're, they're fantastic and they're already there, they don't cost anything. So um, Windows 10 system allows you to resize your icons, adjust the text size, um, adjust colors, um, customize the mouse cursor, the mouse pointer and the cursor, just as Zoom Text did in the, the short video we looked at there. But these features are already included. So the display and vision settings in Windows 10 make it really easy to personalize your viewing experience if you don't need a huge level of magnification or if your sight loss isn't kind of complicated with other things. Um, so we've got another short video. Uh, this one lasts about two minutes, I think. And this is just somebody introducing us to what your Windows 10 system can do straight from the box. So Enter. if we can put that on, that'd be smashing. Recommend choosing automatic installation for the quickest installation of ZoomText. If you choose the custom radio button, Okay, that's right. Um, I think we've well moved as on. Which speech Hello, everyone. Installed. Paul here from. For now, I'm going to choose automatic. Yeah. And click Center. next. Um, or press. Yep, yeah, I think we had two videos playing over each other. So it was the the second one that started is what we're looking at. Um, a guy called Paul, and he's in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Just bear with us, folks. I'm sure it'll be up soon. So, um, I wanted to share with you a video on how to make your computer more accessible using the inbuilt accessibility features. So, in order to do that, it's very simple. We go down to the bottom left hand corner of the screen and click on our start menu, which will bring up a window. And then we're going for the settings cog just there click on that as well then you'll be presented with a window which has all of the window settings that are configurable by a user we're going to go for the ease of access settings here I'm just going to maximize that so we can see them all so this ease of access um, feature uh, is a collection of all the different areas that we can make changes to the setup of our computer to make them uh, more accessible to us and to anyone we're working with. So the first one we'll see is the display. This will help you um, make your display bigger, but also you can make uh, text bigger and easier to read there. Uh, you can make everything bigger here with this drop down up to 175% bigger. So that would change the size of absolutely everything you're seeing on screen. Um, very useful for someone with maybe with a visual impairment. You've also got changes that you can make to the cursor and pointer. Again, size changes and also color changes. Um, the magnifying feature will um, zoom in around your mouse pointer and make things bigger uh, depending on where the mouse is. Uh, color filters can help people see uh, different um, colors, uh, which is useful for looking at photographs maybe. We can also invert the um, color scale, use gray scales, things like that. High contrast is a classic accessibility 
uh, kind of hack. If you turn this on, you'll get the screen reset to having a black background with white text. Uh, that's often very useful for people with visual impairment. Um, and also we have under the vision section, the narrator, which will uh, read out text from your screen. Um, very useful uh, feature there that just requires turning on here. So I won't go through them all, I don't want to make the video too long, but ease of access in your Windows settings is a uh, great place to start if you want to make your computer more accessible. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, that's us. Thank you, Helen. So, so yeah, so, um, you know, the, the ease of access settings, it's already built into a Windows 10 system. So um, for a lot of people, um, that might be all that they need. Um, or perhaps it could be attached to a, you know, your laptop could be attached onto a, a bigger monitor. Um, so yeah, the features are already there. I think um, Microsoft has made a huge step forward um since introducing windows 10 if anybody's looking for the feature you know how you go through that again you know like what are all these things you can just you know google uh do a google search for windows 10 ease of access uh features and it'll tell you there's loads of stuff there's a, a lot of um features as well for people who have um, perhaps dyslexia um, and there, you know there's different things um in the ease of access it's not just around visual impairment and i would say as well most of us, regardless of, you know, having any diagnosed sight condition, a lot of people really struggle to see the tiny print. So, you know, you can adjust your settings just because it's just a, that little bit easier for you. And um, so, yeah, and it's all there already supplied straight from the box. So um, we're now going to move on to the next slide, please, Helen. And this is where we're going to look at using a computer with no vision. Uh, so it's, it's quite possible for someone with no useful vision to use a computer. Most blind computer users navigate through the system and control the program from the keyboard because without the vision, the mouse isn't any good to us. So, so yep, so it would all be done through keyboard commands. So to do this, they would have um, something called a screen reader, um, which not only reads the text from the screen, but it also enables them um, to navigate around the Windows system or whatever system that they're using. So it's not just about what's in front of you, it's how you actually get to that page in the first place. Um, so screen readers can be used on you know, the internet for emails, so everything that you would do in a visual way, um, the screen reader would enable that through a keyboard input and output. Um, so I now have a short video clip, which it demonstrates a screen reader called JAWS, which is um, Job Access with Speech. Um, so JAWS for short. And I won't show the full video because I think it was on for about an hour. <laughs> um, but if we just show a minute or so, and I'll, I'll say to Helen when to stop it. And it's just enough so we can get a brief glimpse of how a screen reader works. And you'll hear someone talking um, and describing the screen reader, and you'll also hear a synth synthesized voice, uh, which is JAWS speaking to you. So if we could um, hopefully put this video on, that would be great. Thanks, Helen. Adding a new contact in the address book. To open the address book, press Control-Shift-B, Bravo. Control-Shift-B, address book, colon, global address list. Search colon edit. Let's look at the menus and how to add a new contact to the address book. Press Alt-F, Foxtrot, to open the file menu and explore the items there. Alt-F, menu, file menu, new entry, dot, dot, dot. You find the following, new entry, new message control plus N, add to contacts unavailable, delete control plus D, properties, close Alt plus F4, I'm going to press down arrow and move back to new entry. New entry dot dot dot. And I'll press enter. Leaving menus, new entry dialog, select the entry type colon, new entry list box, new contact. You have a choice of the following. New contact or new contact group, formerly called distribution lists. Choose new contact and press enter. Untitled dash contact, full name edit. The untitled contact dialog box appears. It has a ribbon at the top instead of menus. Focus is in the full name edit box. 
I'm not going to take a lot of time during the lesson to go through each one of these items. You may press tab and shift tab to move through the many controls here. The main ones you need to get in and out of here fast are the following. Full name and email. I'll type a contact name here. Okay, Helen. Press you Alt M as in Mike nice if you're nice. running job. Um, yeah, so that might have looked really confusing. Um, I don't use JAWS and I don't know how to, um, but that was really to, to show you that um, somebody entering these, you know, the keyboard commands, the kind of Alt plus what have you. Um, so the right command would do the same as what you or I might do using our mouse. Um, so to add someone to our address book, it could be done uh, very simply using the keyboard commands and JAWS telling you where you are uh, within that particular application. Um, so, so yeah, so that's how a screen reader would work. Um, people who are very competent users of screen readers, um, they will speed up the speech, um, which uh, it, it really just means that what you might do visually, you can do so much quicker using a screen reader. So although it might seem quite slow from looking at that video, um, because it's a demo, um, if you were a competent user, you would actually be much quicker at using a computer um, than anyone would uh, visually, because we can listen to things quicker than we can actually read it with our eyes. So in time, mm -hmm you really work through tasks very, very quickly and competently. Um, so some people might use uh, a combination of magnification like we've already seen and, um, and also use screen reader software for other tasks. Um, so they might use magnification for very visual tasks, um, but then ask the screen reader to read out other information um, or to navigate to other things um, so that they can take the strain off using their eyes for everything. Um, and do some things by listening uh, rather than looking at things. Um, so you have software packages which include that combination. So if someone were to have both Zoom text and JAWS, for example, um, the manufacturers have produced a combination called Fusion, which kind of means that you get the two separate softwares, um, but in the same package and therefore that little bit cheaper. A little bit like buying a washing machine with a tumble dryer combined. You'd expect to get uh, the combination a little bit cheaper than two separate machines. Um, so, yep, so we have uh, Fusion is one. Um, another popular one is called Supernova. And again, it has the uh, uh, similar features, well, the same kind of features really to Zoom text and also to JAWS, and it combines it into one package. Um, so it's there for people who like to use, like to have the flexibility of how they use the computer, or sometimes for people whose um, sight loss can fluctuate. Um, so for example, um, if somebody has multiple sclerosis that affects their vision, um, when they have a flare up and their vision's more affected, they might use the screen reader. And then at other times when things aren't quite so, um, you know, when the, where the vision isn't so limited, they might use the, the visual side of the software um, for that. So it allows for that flexibility. Um, my experience is that people, once they use a screen reader, they get a lot more out of it than they thought they would because it becomes so much quicker um, to work around. You're not clicking around on things. The keyboard is doing it, uh, is doing it much quicker and much more efficiently and accurately. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so some magnification um, and screen reading options are available um, free of charge and they can be easily downloaded. Um, you don't get the full version of these softwares because they're, um, you know, there's a cost to those. But if you have the, the demo version that's downloadable, you, you tend to get around 40 minute mode. Um, so it's the full software, but for a limited period. So after 40 minutes, you need to close it down and then reboot your machine to get the next 40 minutes. So it's great, you know, for home use um, rather than having to pay a lot of money for things. Um, but for the work situation, obviously 40 minutes and then rebooting everything's not really practical. So, um, so say, for example, you have a, a client who's doing their job search at home, going online. 40 minutes and then closing it off and starting again. It, yeah, absolutely, uh, perfectly adequate for home use. Um, so there's no cost involved. And uh, or in your organisation, if you have um, in time as 
lockdown restrictions ease people coming in um, to use your facilities for job search, um, the, you can have that installed on your computer there. Um, 40 minutes is sufficient to get some work done and then just reboot it for another 40 minutes ongoing. So there's no end date to these sessions of 40 minutes. It's just that you need to keep rebooting in between. So um, I've mentioned at the bottom of this slide about Braille displays and we have a photograph which is the, the right hand lower, uh, on the right hand side of the screen, the lower photograph. And this is something called a refreshable Braille display. Um, so some blind computer users will use a, a Braille display to access um, the information on the computer screen. So what this gives them is um, they'll have the speech from the screen reader, so JAWS for example, but they can also um, listen to that um, or take that information and use in using Braille. So they have the speech and the Braille sim simultaneously um, from the device being used. Um, so the refreshable Braille display, what it will do is the, the pins um, will rise and fall to create the, um, the Braille uh, the Braille reading. So, so people who are Braille readers um, quite often like to use these things. Now, these things cost an absolute fortune. So I don't suppose you, you get one for your office for people to use. They're about £6,000 um, just for that, that particular um, piece of kit. It's a lot of money. Um, and we'll speak later on about, um, you know, about the funding for things. Um, but it's, it's not something that would come very cheaply. And not many people really would use it. So um, training, just a kind of final point on the uh, topic of computers. Um, so final point, um, specialist training is really important um, in the use of computers using these softwares for someone with sight loss, um, particularly around the, the screen reader side of things. You know, as you, you maybe saw with the magnification, it is really just sort of changing what is already familiar to us. You know, it's the... Um, what we see on the screen is just making that look differently. So that may not require a huge amount of training to use that, but screen readers are a very specialist skill and um, people would need specialist training, not just from a, an IT person, but from a specialist access technology uh, trainer. Um, so training again can be costly, but I can speak a little bit more about that later on. Um, okay, so the next slide is about tablets and smartphones. Thank you, um, which I'm sure everybody is familiar with. We, we all have these devices. So um, tablets and smartphones designed by Apple are called iPads and iPhones. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that. Uh, whereas Android products are produced by many different manufacturers. Um, so each of these devices use touchscreen technology to control them, as I'm sure you know. Uh, so, so Apple devices have um, built-in accessibility through options like speech feedback, screen magnification, um, inverted colours, bold text, and they also have their own built-in video magnifier, which you can use to read printed documents. And most Android devices have built-in accessibility through speech feedback and screen magnification and other features as well. Uh, so most of your clients, like everybody, we all tend to have smartphones these days. Um, and just as you or I might prefer an Apple or Android device, um, people with sight loss will have their own preference as well. Um, both are, you know, can be very, very accessible to people with sight loss. So it's really about what you, what we prefer using. Um, so tablets and smartphone products range in size from compact screens of about five inches to larger ones at about 12 inches. And um, phones and tablets run many applications or apps um, to aid their functionality. So if we could move on to the next slide, please, Helen. Um, so the assistant apps. Um, so, you know, we all download apps onto our phones or iPads, what have you. Um, and uh, assistant apps are applications or programs which can provide access to information. That's basically what they are. So as I'm sure you'll know, apps are available from the online store specific to your device. So that might be the App Store or Google Play, depending on the device you have. And uh, Yep, some assistant apps are completely free of charge. Some of them have a subscription-based service and some can be purchased with a one-off payment. Um, so there's a lot of assistant apps which are really useful to people with sight loss and um, the icons and logos that I've got on the screen today 
and I'll just kind of briefly say what these are. So the first one, top left, is um, Seeing AI. That's a free app which uh, narrates the world around you. It uses the camera on your phone or device um, to describe nearby people or to describe text or objects. Um, so, you know, you could look at, um, say, for example, cooking instructions and ask it to, you could either visually look at it or ask it to read back to you. Um, sorry, uh, Tony, that one, um, that one's called Seeing AI. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, it can do things like um, read, you know, tell you what the cooking instructions are. It could read um, labels on the tins so that you can make sure you're giving the kids a tin of soup and not something else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll go into that. It can also uh, tell someone um, what the, the banknote on their hand is, you know, so you know if it's a fiver or 50 quid. If it's in my purse, it's more likely to be a fiver, I can assure you. All right, bills. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so the second app, so top right hand side, that's one called Be My Eyes. Now this one works through a live video call and there's, um, my goodness, something like 4 million, I think it is, um, volunteers around the world. And uh, they give blind and partially sighted um, device users visual assistance um, for tasks. So you go into this uh, particular app, um, a volunteer will be selected and they can assist you with the task you're trying to carry out. So it could be, um, you know, matching colors. If you have no vision, it's like, you know, are both of these socks black and they'll take this person will look at them through your camera and say no actually one's pink and flowery so you can make sure that you're wearing matching socks or to so select other items for example um you could ask it um if you have no light perception are my lights on or are my lights off and they will be able to tell you something about your environment or if you're preparing a meal um and perhaps you need something red um read to you from packaging um, instructions on things. Um, I've known people to use this for um, reading medication packages. Um, what's my dosage on this? Um, and the person, the volunteer can read it, uh, the, the dosage, dosage instructions by looking at the, the packaging through your, your camera on your phone. Um, so it is really about having a, you know, a person's eyes and literally being your eyes. Um, so the, um, there's a KNFB reader, uh, very, very clever. Uh, and what that does is it converts any text to speech instantly. Um, so, and very, very accurately too. So if there's, um, you know, I'll again go back to food packaging, um, it will read the cooking instructions out to you and it will read it audibly so that you can listen um, to the instructions or to, you know, a letter, for example, I have a, a hard copy letter came in the post, I can't read it, I can uh, use KNFB Reader um, to tell me what's in that letter. Um, very, very clever um, piece of free, um, you know, a free assistant app. Um, so yeah, great for many tasks um, and um, could be used for, say, you know, reading the menu in a restaurant, for example, uh, leaflets that you pick up along the way, that type of thing. Um, so the last one I've got here is called Tap Tap C, and um, that uses your device's camera and the speech functions. Uh, it'll take a picture or a video of anything and it'll identify it out loud to you. So um, yeah, so again, you could uh, on the go, you know, there's perhaps uh, at the bus stop, the timetable, um, it'll read it out to you so that you know when you know, when your bus is coming, how long you've got to wait. It can be used for all sorts of things. So some pretty amazing assistant apps, either through the camera and technology or through, um, as in the case of Be My Eyes, somebody actually linking up with you and uh, assisting you with a particular task. So, okay. Um, so the, the next slide, if we could, please, Helen. Um, so here we're looking at uh, reading aids. So things to, to be able to read um, sort of like hard copy um, paperwork or what have you. So first of all, we have OCR technology. So um, blind people who need to access, uh, need to be able to access print can use a scanner with optical character recognition or OCR technology um, to convert the printed document into electronic text, which can then be read back to them through their computer. So you would have a, you know, scanner, 
piece of paper would go into the scanner and then this software would work in conjunction with your screen reader technology on your computer and it would read out that paper document to you. So fantastic um, way for people to be able to access paperwork. If you're, you or your client are in a job where, you know, we, not everything is paperless. There are sometimes things that come in, letters through the post, old files or what have you. Um, this um, OCR technology would allow it to be read out to you. So fantastic um, stuff. Um, we have a picture of somebody reading Braille, uh, which we might more, be more familiar with what that looks like. Um, so uh, some people use Braille to read and access information. Um, and I think maybe in the workplace, it might be most often used if someone's delivering a presentation and they need notes, um, you know, for their own prompts. Like, you know, you might use um, sort of like cue cards um, with your, your notes on a person who's a Braille reader um, would perhaps have their notes in Braille for delivering their presentation. Um, sometimes people use them in meetings uh, to refer to their notes when they're in a meeting. And so they have the, the Braille copy there. Um, to enable them to, to have these notes there. So um, Braille can be purchased through a transcription service and it's produced by something called a Braille embosser, um, which punches the little um, raised dots um, to create the Braille. And that works in conjunction with a um, transcription software. And somebody once asked me about buying a Braille emboss embosser um, for a member of staff and um, they're expensive and they're also very loud. Um, so you kind of need like a separate room really to put it in. Um, and I think, you know, even a, a regular Braille user would probably not use Braille terribly often. So it'd be about kind of weighing up, do I really need that? Or just um, paying for something to be transcribed professionally. I would certainly go with that option. So. Okay, so um, the, the bottom pictures that we have on this slide, so these are video magnifiers, or sometimes they're called CCTVs. Um, and basically they use a camera and a screen to magnify things electronically. Um, so they're mostly used for reading and writing, um, but they can help with any task uh, where magnification would help. So um, there's lots of different kinds of video magnifiers available. Um, um, some of them are models which would share a screen, uh, sorry, share the, the monitor of your computer. So they would just attach to your computer um, and you would use your, your computer monitor or your laptop monitor to actually view uh, the thing that you want to look at. There's port portable models um, and there's units that focus on distant objects um, such as signs or notice boards. Sometimes people use them when they're attending uh, PowerPoint presentations so that they can see something more at a distance. So the, the type of video magnifier that you might use would really depend on the task that you want to use it for. So the little one, the first one here that somebody's using and it's got some words across the screen. Um, that's it's ideal uh, for checking price labels or cooking instructions or if you need something for tasks away from your desk and you want something that's very portable and um, but the the screens are only about five inches across so you would only really want something like this for reading small snippets of information you wouldn't really although this in this picture someone's reading a book with it you're not getting much on your screen at a time. So I don't think that's really the best option, um, but very, very handy. It can fit in your pocket, in your bag, what have you, and it's good to have on the go. So the one with the image of the butterfly, that one measures about 10 inches across the screen. Uh, and that's great for reading A4 printed documents um, when you need something that you can carry around with you. Um, so again, it's very portable. Um, it is great for, for jobs on the go. And um, yeah, as I say, and if you've got a couple of pages of A4, it, it's absolutely fine. So it's good for, you know, letters, that type of thing. But if you have lots of hard copy paperwork, um, so perhaps you have very lengthy reports to read or um, I once worked with a lady who was a solicitor who had to re refer to old law books and read so much information um, you wouldn't use a smaller video magnifier for that and um, so that's when you would perhaps use the the desktop um, video magnifier and that would possibly have a screen of about 16 inches um, 
the particular device that we have here with the, the child's face on it, um, what that one actually does, it doesn't just display the picture, uh, the image in front of, uh, you know, the image from your document, it actually reformats the whole document digitally. So what it will do is make it, it can make it fit onto the screen in the font size that you need. Um, so it means like you're not just fitting part of your document and at the one time it'll all be there and it will digitally change that very, very clever devices. And it can also read your document or your book out to you um, so you can listen to it. Um, so a fantastic piece of kit for somebody who has lots of reading to do. So if you have a report that's not available digitally and it's only a hard copy version, um, fantastic way to read volumes of of um, printed text. And as I say, you can also listen to it. So um, that's the various types of reading aids um, that people might use. Um, Helen, could we move on to the, the next slide, which is really about low tech solutions. And sometimes it's not always possible to use access technology to solve every problem that you might encounter. And some people might just want a simple low tech solution. Um, so the, the first picture we see, it's a simple magnifier. And I think this particular one might have a light on it as well, you know, but very kind of simple magnifying glass, like perhaps what maybe a more up to date version of what Sherlock Holmes might have used. Um, but hey, if it does the job and it's what someone's comfortable with, that's great. So um, to make typing easier, We've got larger letter keyboards with high contrast colors and they can make a real difference to people. So the, the keys are the same size as any other keyboards. Um, it's just the letter on them that's bigger. So the lettering on the keys might be about the size of what you would have on a, a square from a Scrabble set. So you can imagine it's just a lot easier to see because it's bigger, um, but the keys themselves are just the same size. Um, and lots and lots of people would use this type of thing. They do come in different color combinations, um, you know, to whatever suits somebody best. So um, the bottom left screen, my goodness, I've struggled to find a picture uh, to show you or something like this. So I'll explain what it is. And um, so we, we sometimes see machines such as photocopiers, which use touchscreen displays um, for selecting the copying functions or scanning functions. Um, and in this situation, it might be possible to use a low tech solution just to help someone with sight loss to use it. And what we have here is a tactile overlay for the screen, um, which could just help somebody to easily select the options on the keypad. Um, doesn't always work um, this way because often the, you know, the very modern um, photocopiers and the like have different display screens. So, it's uh, if you have a tactile overlay for one screen, it's not going to automatically translate to the next. So um, sometimes those types of uh, uh, you know devices, um, it's it can be a bit more difficult to find the answer for it. But we generally manage to find something. It might be using a portable magnifier to look at the display on the screen it might be the answer. But but indeed, uh, you know, tactile overlays you know do have a part, and I know a number of people who use them. So. Um, okay, um, we've got the, the little green device with the colored buttons um, on the bottom right hand corner. Um, so that would be used if somebody perhaps needs to take down a quick message or write a note or set themselves a reminder. And in that type of situation, a digital voice recorder such as this would allow them to record and store personal notes. Um, so it only has, um, I think it's something like a 10 minute uh, recording on it. Um, so it's just for short things, recording out somebody's phone number or, or some other short snippet like that. Um, so all of these low tech solutions can make a huge difference, um, but at a very, very low cost and very cheap, um, you know, options. Which takes us on to the money side of things on the next slide, Helen, please. So yeah. So funding, um, what it's really all about. So yeah, on the subject of cost, uh, we can look at the funding options um, that you might use for the, the different, um, you know, equipment, software, and uh, other gadgets that we've looked at today. So, so yeah, in relation to work, um, access to work is definitely the, the starting point. So um, if anyone's not familiar or not you know, not too familiar. Access to Work is a scheme run by Job Centre Plus, 
and the scheme provides advice and practical support uh, to people with disabilities or long-term health conditions and it's about enabling them to work alongside their colleagues. So when someone's in work or about to start work, access to work can pay for any special aids and equipment, uh, the types of things we've spoken about today, and also um, the training that you might need to use them, which as I mentioned earlier, can be very, very, it's very specialist and it's very expensive. So access to work absolutely can pay for these types of things. Um, so access to work can also pay for adaptations to premises and to equipment. Um, it can also pay for support workers if someone needs that and for travel to get you to work where there's no practical public transport of, um, alternative for you. Um, there's also a, a procurement scheme run by Job Centre Plus uh, for benefits claimants um, who need assistive technologies to help them in their job search. So this is for people who aren't in work yet. Um, and it can help them uh, if it's something they need to help them move towards employment. So I don't think it's widely advertised, um, but your client could ask their work coach or disability employment advisor to find out more. Um, there will be, um, of course, restrictions on if people are on certain programmes, they may feel then it's for the, the provider to supply these things. Um, but, you know, they, um, it's definitely worth um, your client asking at the job centre to see if, if they can be provided with help to pay for a device to help them move into work. Um, so we have um, Site Scotland Veterans. So um, this is a, just a charity specific to Scotland, of course, um, but th there will be um, other you know, similar things around the UK. So, um, so Site Scotland Veterans can provide specialist equipment free of charge um, to aid independence in day-to-day -day tasks. Um, so if your client served in the armed forces at any time, it might be worth looking into this. I would say in your own area, um, there will be um, most likely a, a directorate of services for veterans and um, you could look to see, you know, if this is something that perhaps they could be using. Um, if you can't find anything, I would say to contact our helpline, I'll give you details at the end, and they would be able to put you in touch with the local employment advisor for your area, who would have a knowledge of what there is um, in your local area. So, um, yeah. Um, but I know that Site Scotland veterans can, they can provide electronic magnifiers and all sorts of digital technology and even smartphones and tablets. So definitely working into, look, worth looking into this. If somebody has even served for a day of national service, uh, they would be eligible for these services. Um, local authorities have sensory impairment teams. And again, the provisions will vary massively uh, depending on what each local authority can offer. But again, it's worth looking into. And if the local authority can't directly support with the costs of equipment, um, they can sometimes um, put someone with sight loss um, in touch with the right place that can help them. Uh, so if your client can speak with their sensory impairment team within their local authority social work department and see uh, what they can offer or what they could perhaps signpost them on to or support them to apply for. Um, um, so we go on to low vision clinics, uh, which is linked in with um, health boards. So again, services can vary depending on which part of the country that you're in. Uh, but low vision, assess, uh, low vision clinics can often provide gadgets and devices, um, most often the, the low tech uh, magnifiers and that type of thing uh, that we've looked at today. And um, someone's GP or optician should be able to tell them uh, where they can access these services. And I think a number of uh, low vision clinics are now run from community based opticians to make them easier to access. So people aren't asking for GP referrals to hospitals and then on to this. Um, but as I say, your GP should be able to point you in the direction for local uh, low vision clinics. Um, and then we have RNIB grants, which I think it works on the basis of when you've exhausted all the others, <laughs> we've got this option. And um, RNIB offers grants to registered blind or partially sighted people to pay for useful technology um, that can help them to live independently. So whether that's about work or whether it's about home, um, that's what these grants are there for. 
and the grants can be as much as £500, which is quite a lot of money, and it can pay for many of the technologies that we've seen today. Um, if somebody wanted a, a piece of equipment that was more expensive, um, it could be possible that they could get a grant from somewhere else to make up the balance or if they had the money to, to make that up for them. Um, but £500 grants, um, it, you know, so it's uh, certainly cover the costs of a lot of the things that we've seen today. Um, okay, so uh, just checking my time. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so moving on to the last part here. So, um, so yes, yeah, so if you want to know more about RNIB's offer to you as an employment professional, this is the page that you would go to here. So we have www.rnib org.uk forward slash employment professionals and there's lots of really good resources um, in that section of our website um, to support you as employment professionals in your work and I'll close quickly because I know I'm running out of time here <laughs> so um, our last slide um, is in closing I uh, I just want to mention that our next session of our RNIB Seeing Opportunities series of webinars is on Wednesday the 12th of May and then we'll be looking at remote job interviews and what's needed to make sure your clients with sight loss are ready and able to access them. Um, so I'd like to see if there's any questions anyone wants to ask. I'm sorry I've talked endlessly today. We've covered an awful lot of stuff. Um, but, you know, please get in touch with us if you want to go through things in more detail. And other than that, I would just like to finish off by saying thanks to everyone for coming along and to Helen for her amazing support, as always, in making sure that this has worked. Um, thank you, Helen. Hello. Um, and, and sorry about the technical <laughs> problem a little bit of the way through that. Um, the, the first people didn't want to stop their presentation, did they? Um, no, thank you, Heather. That was really, really informative. And I'm seeing lots of comments. Elizabeth says, thank you for such a super informative session, as does Samantha. Many thanks. It was really helpful. Oh, I can't even read them now. They're coming in so fast. So everyone's saying it's really, really useful, very informative, especially the free apps. Um, I didn't know about some of those. They sound fantastic. Um, and lots of thank you. Very good and helpful. So, um, yes, thank you so much for that. As I say, for those of you, I know you were making notes as we go through, but we will get the session up onto our YouTube channel as soon as we can to make sure that you are able to access those apps um, and, and make use of them. As Heather has said for us very kindly, if I do see a question come in, I will come back. But as Heather has said to us, um, we are going to be back with RNIB for a future session, but we do have some other sessions coming up on the live learn lunches over the following weeks. Um, next week, we have Bounce Australia joining us and they will be taking us through how we can harness the power of our motivation. So we'll be looking at how we can understand where motivation comes from, why some of us find it um, easier than others to motivate ourselves and where we can sort of look for techniques for inspiration. And um, that can have a real impact on our day to day performance. The following week on the 28th, we have Career Map joining us. And the topic there is I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Um, and we will have Sharon Walpole, who is the editor of Career Mag Publications for Career Map. And she will be looking at, the, she will be sharing the methods she uses in order to research quickly um, career information when it's a career she's not familiar with. We know sometimes we get, um, we get. Um, program participants in and they may have aspirations in a career field that we're not familiar with so how do we quickly find out the information we need Sharon's going to help us with that and then over the following weeks all through May and onwards we have lots of excellent sessions we've got a session around positive mindsets we've got that ready for the interview session and we have some sessions with a good employability company around what advice works and how do we know where do we get the worldwide evidence from and also taking risks and doing good how do we help and how, who do we harm so some really good sessions coming up over the next few weeks so I hope that I will see many of you joining me again as I'm joined by my daughter at the end of today's session she's not realized I'm online still obviously um, thank you all for your company today and joining us for your lunch. I hope you found it useful. Um, do get in touch if you have any suggestions for other live lunches you would like to see over the coming weeks and months and I will make sure I do my very best to schedule them for you. Thank you very much everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye.
Thank you particularly, Thank Heather. You. Great Bye. session as always. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.